I'm Barney Butterfield and I'm the owner of Sandford Orchards. Uh, we've been at the Cider Works in Crediton now since 2009 uh, and I'm going to show you a little bit around the Cider Works, show you some apple pressing and, and maybe even taste some cider by the end of it. So I've got an example of the apples that we're pressing at the moment um, and these are all local cider varieties and the important thing about them is that they're offering something in the juice that you wouldn't find from an ordinary apple that you might buy from the grocer's shop. Um, I cut these apples in half a few minutes ago, um, actually less than that, and you can see it's already going orange and that's oxidisation of the tannin. Now tannin is the thing that we Brits just love. We like it in our tea, we like it in our marmalade, we like it in our red wine and we love it in our cider. And you can't have high tannins on a dessert apple. Um, and this apple here, this is an Ellis bitter, um, large, soft, open fruit, full of beautiful bitter characteristics, which when they come through into the cider, give that depth and character that makes Devon cider very popular and give cider that edge and that bite that we're all looking for. Um, and then the other apples on this table, this is Brown's apple. This apple is actually a lot lower in, in acid and you can see that it's not um, it's high in acid, sorry, but lower in tannin. You can see it's not quite oranged up in the same way as the others. And we use this as a balancing apple. Very clean, got a long, lovely white wine finish to it. Um, but it's got the right amount of acidity, which is really important uh, for a successful fermentation. So apples are used in balance for both flavor and for successful um, fermentation and storage. Ashton Bitter is an early bittersweet. Um, wonderfully rich, lovely flavour and uh, a delicious balancing apple as well. Um, and the last one here is Major. Now this, is, this has become popular lately, it's very good in organic orchards, it survives without sprays, it's a good dependable apple um, and produces a really high quality juice as well. Um, and hopefully in a minute I'll show you how it's pressed. So what you've got happening here is the fruit that's been brought to us with tractor and trailer has been tipped up and it's going to get pressed and the way we move the apples is by using water so we've got a hose pipe that will pump five gallons a second which is a big hose pipe admittedly and that allows the fruit to get picked up and gently flumed into the building it does two or three things for us all at once firstly it moves the fruit gently secondly it will clean the fruit and thirdly it helps us separate any fruit from any stones or hard debris that might be with the fruit and the reason that that might be there is because we want an apple at its best flavor we want that apple to have fallen from the tree and so we harvest from the ground using little machines that look like street sweepers and a street sweeper can't tell the difference between a stone and an apple so although you might only have one stone a day if that stone ends up in the apple mill then we're broken down. So by using water, we go across a pit, the stone will fall in there, the good clean apples will go past and we can then make cider without having a breakdown. So that's the very simple and elegant way that we move our apples into the mill. You can see the apples being um, brought along the flume naturally just just being drawn along by the water they're elevated up into the apple cleaning um, into the first apple cleaning section where they roll down an elevator which is going the wrong way good hard round apples will roll straight down a half apple a rotten apple leaves and twigs are rejected and end up back in the water course where they are later cleaned out to be re to, for the water to be recirculated the apples then go up the elevator and are milled and that means they're broken into, into almost apple sauce so that they can then be pumped onto the press uh, to be, uh, for the juice to be extracted. You see the press has got two belts. So it's very intelligently named a twin belt press where the apple pumice, which is what we call the smashed up apple, um, is gradually pressed tighter and tighter through pneumatic pressure um, to release the juice. Um, which then runs out and is pumped away to the fermenters. At the end of the press, the dry pumice 
is coming off continuously and being elevated into a, into a trailer where it is then taken away and fed to cows. So this vat is a vat that we named the General. Uh, it came from a cider maker in Somerset um, uh, called Coat Cider and it, it was born in Froome in about 1900. Um, and it is the most exquisite piece of work inside as well as out. Um, every single stave of the vat is numbered because the vat would have been made obviously by hand um, but in pieces and then taken to the cidery uh, to be reassembled. Uh, the oak in the vat would date back to likely before Henry VIII. That oak tree would have had to be growing to be as thick and as heavy as this vat is. The oak tree would have been had to be growing for at least 400 years before it could have been cut and split. Um, it's a 10,000 gallon vat uh, and using wood allows us to express some really interesting notes in, in the cider which is particularly important for one particular cider that we make that lives in this vat which is also called the General. It's a high strength, very high tannin, really rich and very strongly defined cider um, and, and this vat is hugely responsible for the quality uh, of the cider that we get from it. This is our Devon Red, which is our, our, certainly our biggest seller. People love it for the amount of, of rich autumnal baked apple flavor that you get in it. It's a really lovely, uh, naturally bittersweet, um, but lightly balanced cider. It's got all of the notes that you'd hope for from a classic bittersweet cider, but delivered in a much more contemporary way. Um, and, and we find that when people are looking for a pouring cider and a cider where they've, they've decided to, to branch out and, and try cider that's made perhaps with a bit more thought and a bit more consideration, Devon Red is the one that they reach for. Um, and it's certainly the, uh, the, the, the cider that I tend to go to when it's a Friday afternoon. Yeah, I'd have another one of those.